in the cascade of two FIR filters shown here, so FIR filter 1 and FIR filter 2 in cascade, as you can see, we want to show that with the given impulse responses H1 of N and H2 of N, uh, then the overall system effectively, the overall system effectively is equivalent to this simple FIR filter that is shown here. Why is that the case? So I'm going to show you using two methods. The method one, so the first method is using a Z transform. So by Z transform, I mean we know that when we have a two system in cascade, uh, then so we have H1 of Z, which is the Z transform of the first uh, system, and H2 of Z, the Z transform of the second system in cascade, then we know the overall system. So basically, if we put the whole thing as one black box, then the overall system has a Z transform or transfer function that is basically the product of the two involved system h1 and h2 so my job here is just find the transfer function of each of them so let's start let me move this to uh, the other side so that then we can easily find the answer so i'm gonna put it here so i'm gonna put it just here and let's uh, find the z transform okay so for z transform for the first system uh, H1 of Z is the Z transform, so let's say for H1 of N, which means uh, uh, sigma from N equal to negative infinity to plus infinity, and then H1 of N, and Z to the negative N. I'm just going brute force. Of course, you can see that for any negative indices, H1 is zero, so I don't care about negative values, so I'm going to just say sigma N equal to zero, but then again, for positive indices above 19, H1 and again 0, so I'm not going to care anything above 19 index. And then it will be 0.2, Z to the negative N. Well, 0.2 is a constant, sits outside the summation, or sigma, and then uh, it becomes as simple as 1 plus Z minus 1 plus Z minus 2 plus Z minus 3 plus dot 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 up to Z minus 19. If I multiply both numerator and denominator here, uh, what I get is, or maybe just to have enough space, let me let me just do it this way. I'm gonna shift it. I'm gonna put this thing. I'm gonna put this thing in the next line here. Okay, perfect. And there you go. Now, if I multiply both numerator and denominator by 1 minus c minus 1, what I'm going to get is 1 minus c minus 20 in numerator divided by 1 minus c minus 1 in denominator. So that is h1 of z. I found h1 of z. Very nice. Now, what about h2 of z? The, basically, the z transform of a system, the second system that has this difference equation. So this is the difference equation of the second FIR system that relates output Y of N to input V of N and its past values of samples. Okay, so if we take a Z transform out of this uh, difference equation, obviously Y of Z is V of Z minus, since it's a delay of N minus 1, that translates to Z minus 1 V of Z. Therefore, obviously, it becomes... 1 minus c minus 1 v of z, which is the input. Therefore, we can say h2, let me put it here. Therefore, we can say h2 z, h2 z, which is output for the second system, which is output y of z divided by its input v of z, is just 1 minus c minus 1. Great, so we found H2 of Z as well. And then we're gonna just substitute here. So what I'm gonna say then, HZ, which is the product of these things we found, is 0.2, one minus Z minus 20, divide by one minus Z minus one, that's H1, times 
1 minus d minus 1, that's h2. These two cancel out each other. And then, as a result, what remains is just this portion. And that is exactly the impulse response that represent, is represented by what is shown here, because we have point 0.2, which is this multiplier, which is multiplying input incoming sample x of n by point 0.2. And then we have 1 minus z minus 20, basically via 20 sample delay, we are delaying input samples, and then we are subtracting those delayed samples from incoming scaled samples, and then we realize the output. So that is method one. What is method two? Okay, for the second method, uh, I'm going to use just, uh, no, I'm not going to use the Z-transform. It will be as simple as saying it this way. Okay, uh, we see that H1 of N uh, is, as we discussed uh, in the method one, is equal to 0 0.2 for indices between 0 and 19 and is 0 outside. So I can say H1 of N is equal to 0 0.2 times U of N minus u of n minus 20 because u of n or uh, unit a step uh, let's say function it would it would become it would start having a value uh, equal to 1 at n equal to 0 forever but then we want to stop it at n equal to 20 because the last one we want to have a non-zero value is 19 so by subtracting u of n minus 20 we are forcing that only indices between 0 and 19 would have a value of 1 and then scaled by 0.2 to get us to what we want. So this is H1 of n. What about H2 of n for the second system? For H2 of n, as you can see, H2 is when we apply input delta to see what we get. So H2 of n is basically the output y of n when we apply delta, which means Delta n, instead of v, I'm going to apply delta. That's the impulse response, meaning of impulse response. So this is obviously H2 of n. Now we have two system, FIR1 and FIR2 in cascade. We know that the overall system is the convolved. When they are in cascade, we know that the overall system is a convolution of them. So H1 of n is, H, H of n is H1 convolved with H2. And uh, the rest of it is easy because there is a delta function involved. So what we are doing is we are saying 0.2. It's a scalar. Let's keep it outside. That doesn't change anything. And allow me, instead of writing u of n, I'm going to write un. And instead of u of n minus 20, I'm going to just show it u, n, u sub n minus 20. That's easier. So I, have, um, so I have u of n minus u of n minus 20. And... Uh, then I have convolved with delta n minus delta n minus 20, 1. The rest of it is super easy. Let me change the color so that it's visible what I'm writing. Okay, so uh, the rest of it is as simple as uh, 0.2, keep it outside. So u of n um, and then minus u of n minus 20 convolved with delta n means itself. Nothing will change. Okay, so u of n minus u of n minus 20. Now, same u of n minus, n, uh, minus u of n minus 20 is convolved with negative delta n minus 1. So everything is shifted index-wise by, by one index. So it become u of n, so it become u of n minus 1. So u of n becomes u of n minus 1. And u of n minus 20 becomes u of n minus 21. And then there is a negative sign involved as well. Be careful about that. This negative sign. So as a result, minus and plus. So then I'm going to just put them here. Very nice. Uh, this is by definition, delta n, and uh, this one is by definition negative delta n minus 20. 
So effectively, we get to 0.2 delta n minus delta n minus 20, which is exactly which is exactly what we wanted. This is overall h of n. So overall impulse response uh, for this FIR system. OK, so um, and uh, that is exactly matching what you're seeing again here. There you go. In the sense that, uh, again, the input incoming samples incoming samples are multiplied by so incoming samples are multiplied by 0.2 first as is shown here and then after that we have incoming samples subtracted from incoming sample the 20 sample delayed version so we are delaying the 20 sam by 20 sample which is z minus 20 uh, incoming samples and then we are subtracting the result which is the delayed by 20 sample from the incoming sample and then pushing it out, pushing the output of subtraction out as output samples. And that is exactly what we wanted. I hope that this explanation and illustration example is helpful in terms of understanding the cascade, uh, exercising the cascade of FIR systems and uh, how to deal with them.